Ever since COVID uh, has showed itself in our country, uh, and in particular in our county, uh, things have really been uh, ramped up. The initial request was for 250 masks, and I put a Facebook post up and said to all my sewing friends, hey, let's do this. So, no, I had no idea, and then... That turned into making masks for all the first responders, the frontline folks, and we're up to about 3,800 now that are from us. And I know that there's, there's a whole bunch of other groups also that are making masks, and so thank you for that. Well, the help that we're getting from the community in manufacturing these cloth masks that have been recommended by the CDC and, and even the Department of Health uh, for Washington State has been tremendous. When this all hit, the very first phone call I made was to Amanda. I'm Amanda Beitzel, and I am basically now retired from everything except charity work. She's an accomplished seamstress. She sewed my prototype gown, isolation gown, within um, four or five hours she had it done. We know what we typically use as far as masks and gloves and eye protection, but when COVID struck, the major manufacturers, 80% of uh, healthcare PPE is made in Asia, and so those major manufacturers began to reduce the number of uh, masks and, and PPE that was available to other countries. It's been kind of interesting watching the process evolve and I guess the quickness of how it's gotten put together. This next week, we're up in the production. We're gonna have this drop-by center, and which is off over here. And we're, we're gonna have kits, mask kits, and we can drop them off to people. And gown, gown kits also. Now we'll just speed up the production. Over at Squim Community Church, which is on 5th, that will be just a drop site where people can drop off masks, drop off gowns. Sound Community Bank downtown Squim is another one of our just drop-off sites during their business hours. You can also go to the Trin Trinity uh, Methodist Church and pick up kits and bring them home and sew them and take them back. Uh, and I think that's the preferred way to do it, yeah. When the state approved the use of uh, cloth masks and encouraged the citizen to put on a cloth mask anytime they go out into public, uh, we kind of uh, began to talk with Dr. Unthink and our medical program director, Dr. Whitley, and they both felt that it was a, a great resource to be able to utilize these masks to put on patients. Our first responders have more of the surgical masks and the N95 masks available to them to use, which is prolonging our stock of uh, those vital pieces of equipment. The other benefit is our first responders can wear these. Um, they'll don an N95 mask or a surgical mask, and then they can place this mask over the top of that, which will reduce the amount of respiratory droplets that are making contact with them. The respiratory droplets would get um, adhered to this mask, which is covering their N95 or their surgical mask, which allows them to take this mask off at the end of the call, launder it, and then utilize the N95 or the surgical mask um, for the next call that they go on. We act as a distribution center or a collection center actually here, and then we transfer all those masks and gowns, face shields, some of the other gear, to the county site which is at Grey Wolf, and then it goes over to the county center at uh, the Vern Burton Center in PA. And then from there, they clean it, they inventory it, and then ensure that it gets out to, in a priority, to the, the three tiers. Some of our masks have made it all the way out to Forts, um, to the Quayet in Indian uh, Tribal Center. Um, and we know that because there was a couple of folks in Costco this past week and one of our sewers is an assistant manager there and went, hey, I made those masks. Knowing that there are community members that are concerned about our health and our safety and the health and safety of our families and are participating in keeping us on the line and able to work, it's an amazing feeling. It's really uh, humbling to, to know how much your community cares for what you do. And I just want to ensure the good citizens community of Squam that their efforts, their work, 
is is being recognized and very much appreciated. And if people want to know um, how to request a mask, you can always email this group here, or you can call or text us. We will make sure that uh, you get some mask, and then we'll, we'll make sure that you're in that reporting system. So I just like to encourage our community, the businesses, the health folks, essential workers, uh, follow, try to follow that process because that, that makes sure that we have tracking up and that the gear is getting out and being used.